this game again um i've been having a play with the new wonderful moments it's called it's uh the one with i'm just trying to get it down now so i can show you it's the one with the bride the pregnant lady and the other lady with the balloons and presents and stuff i've also used for this card this tiny little thinlet from the flourishing thinlets um beautiful because i've done it in certain colors I wanted to add a splash of silver on there as well, so I use that little flourish. This is going to be the star of the show. And it's an also a fancy fold card. It's actually uh, quite beautiful. I love it. Um, sorry for umming. I've got my board is trapped. Uh, sorry about the shake then. I've also been using this beautiful tuft embossing folder. It's absolutely gorgeous. And I just love what it does to your pet cardstock. It's absolutely amazing. It look, it looks like a quilt. It's just beautiful. Either way is gorgeous, but I'm loving this one. I have run all my pieces through the big shop. I'm gonna show you the pieces first as we go along. I'm getting my drawer open because I don't want to knock my other camera off. <laughs> my battery died, so I'm having to use my camera today. Um, these are the small pieces you're going to need. You're wondering how, how this is going to come together, I suppose. I'm sorry I've got a frog in my throat. I'm using some foil silver, silver foil sheets as well to lay these. <laughs> and you're getting a bit curious now. <laughs> these pieces are coming in slowly. These are all the bits I need. This piece is for under here. I know I could have cut bits out and stuff, but I uh, absolutely am adoring this card at the moment. It's just, I'm going to show you in a minute, put you out your miseries, but these are the bits I'm using. This is from that beautiful flourish in the silver. I'm using the Merry Merlot, which is absolutely divine. This is, I bet you're all wondering, you're going, what the heck, what the heck, what's this card? <laughs> and this is the piece we're going to be stamping on. I better show you when I put you out your misery. <laughs> it's this beautiful centre step card. Oh, my flourish is coming off and yet it's got a, a adhesive backing on there. Oh, but let me move these pieces. It sits on your desk like this. Isn't it just divine? And it's a centre fold card. Uh, it's not quite long enough there, but it does fold shut like this and it does fit inside a regular size envelope. And then you can, the recipient can sit it up like this. I need a little bit of a, and this one is going to be for the bride, as it says there. But I'm loving the way you can add all these jewels to the quilted bit. Just divine. I adore this. And I've, the figure itself, the lady, and this redness around the outside is actually in the catalogue, but it's a totally different card. So we've got our little fancy fold going on. Centre step and an easel card all in one go. So it's so simple to make as well. What you're going to need are, as we're going along, there's quite a few pieces of paper actually. You're going to need a piece of card, which is 11 and 3 quarters. So you, all you do is pop it in your trimmer, the short side, and trim it down to five and a half. And that's the length of your card. You will also need a piece this size, which is seven eighths by four. I'm going to do the silver foil pieces now. One is, I'm going to turn them over because you're going to get blinded otherwise. Ooh. Three and three eighths by five and three eighths. This one is four by three eighths. You're going to need two at seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And you're going to need two at seven eighths by seven eighths. <laughs> These are for those lovely little tiny little panels here and here. Just a gorgeous, gorgeous card. So onto the Whisper White. We now need a piece that is three quarters by three and seven eighths. That goes with the Merry Merlot for the front. You are going to need two pieces at three quarters by three quarters, and therefore there. 
you're going to need two pieces which are three quarters by two and three quarters and they're for there and then you're going to need this one which is three and a, three and seven eighths by three and one eighth and that's for that one there you get a little board all the way around and you're going to need this one which is uh three and one quarter by five and a quarter and this is going to get layered onto here we'll add our gemstones at the end but believe it or not this is where we're going to stamp that gorgeous image and i've run these through the big shop with in as individual pieces because i wanted to get some of these little dots in so i can add gems to those as well it's just wonderful absolutely gorgeous and if you notice on the little squares i have sat them so there's a little space in center to fit a little gem on there as well to add more decoration so the, whoops there are my little pieces absolutely adorable so we're going to pop them just to one side for a moment we'll do the layering shortly some of the silver foil has got adhesive back on because these intricate dies sometimes as you can see it's there it's going to come off later so we're going to need our trimmer and we're going to trim first I'm going to pop it in at one inch this side and you're going to take your cutting blade and you're going to take it to one inch now I'm just going to line this up to make sure it's in the right space I need to lift that arm up there you go it's right there I haven't got my camera on view at the moment it's uh, making sure that's lined up oh let me lift that up again press down and we're going to cut this from one to f uh, five and one eighth now don't mess or move that now just lift it up flip your card over back in at one inch lay this down I mean you know we're still at the five and one eighths and we're going to take it all the way back up to one inch let me just check yay perfect and take it out and that is it for the trimmer you can go ahead and use uh let's i tell you what i'm going to use this on this side in fact i'm going to put it in at one inch first and we're going to score to the score line and then we're going to take it down the bottom and we're going to score up to the score line now we're going to have to turn it because I used that one there. We're going to put this in at two inches and do the same. So up to the score line and from the score line up. Then the next one is four and one eighth. And this time I'm going to score from one down to four and a half. So we're doing it between the cut lines. Yes, I think that's right. <laughs> and then we're going to go to five and one eighth and cut two of the score lines again. So from one and then from four and a half down to the edge. And then we're going to take this cross. I was doing mine, the other one, on my scoreboard board. We're going to take this to eight and one quarter and score right through that is it it's so simple perfection now the folding technique this one we're going to fold over as normal don't overly burnish things right away because we're going to bend this one in the center and we're going to bend these ones as well and then we're going to, it's all mountain folds except for this one. These are valleys. So it's mountain, valley, mountain, valley, mountain, mountain. So it lays flat like that. We're going to burnish them now. And this top bit. 
So now there is your centre step card. Isn't that fantastic? We will burnish this again later. I'm going to do it again nice and crisp this time. So that's how this is going to sit now on your desk or on your recipient's desk. Isn't that fabulous? How quick was that? So let's just get our pieces in. I'm not going to stick this down because we're going to stamp and this one, but we can start adding our little layers now with the, my Tombow. You can use fast, in fact, no, I'm going to use fast views. Not for quickness, but I just think they're going to turn out a little bit better and stronger finish with the fast views. And it will stop that glue residue in case I get it in the wrong spot. So this has got a backing on. So nice little border all the way around. Oops. It's on the wonk. That little one was on the wonk. <laughs> Oops, whoa, look at that. It's a bit that was a bit full on with the fast views then. Every, the person you're going to send this card to, you can, you can have any, you can have to the bride and groom, Mr. and Mrs. I'm just doing it what it says on the stamp set, which is to the bride. Absolutely outstanding. This piece we're going to save till after. They're going to think you spent hours and hours and hours on this card. And I'm loving the fact with the fast views that I can pull that little bit up again. Just get my little border. There it is, perfect. Make sure I glue the wrong or the right side of the card. Don't worry about it being too close at the bottom because they're going to get tucked behind there anyway. So we've done those little pieces. I'm going to turn that over so I don't glare you out. And with this being a textured, the dynamic ones, you only need one of your impression plates. So... It's so it was 31 degrees here earlier. It's absolutely stifling hot. So there's our pieces put together. I have no backing on this one, I don't think. No. So this is going right on here. And I'm I've got a little border either side and the tiniest little one here. You could take it down a little bit more if you wanted to, but I love the effect and no one's going to see the back of the card but don't take it beyond your crease line so fold that up push that against check your distance either side and press down oh it's just beautiful absolutely gorgeous I can't wait for you to see all the gems going on I'm not sure if these have got backing on yes there we go I had some silver foil sheet left that I wanted to use up and I'm lining them up perfectly at the top and a little bit shorter on the bottom but you won't see this because it's tucked up behind this part there we go so I'm going to lay this down again Get this, oh, don't stick down. <laughs> Lay this, keeping them about the same distance either side. Super sticky back this time. And there it goes. Oh, love it. I think these might be backed as well. Yes, yay! I did a um, 
card the other night and I had lots of pieces and I added a, a full sheet of the adhesive backing onto the silver foil but I had a few pieces left so I didn't want to waste them. So hence the fact that I am popping them on this card. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So there's the pieces we can put on for now. Oh, I love it. I'm loving it. So what I need to do is I need to burnish that this way. So when my flap sits open, it sits... I oh, look at that beautiful quilting. It's just gorgeous. Love it. Right. Now on to the next stage. We're going to do some stamping. And what I used instead of dimensionals, because I wanted a little bit more height, there's that beautiful stamp. I used a piece of our of the foam strips because it's they're, they're a lot thicker. So once this is on, oh, actually it's going on the back of here, so I can trim that now actually. And I decided not to flag the ends this time. I thought it was a bit of a a bit too party style, if you know what I mean. I'm just going to leave it plain. I think that's a bit too long, but I do need some more for the other side. Oh, look at that. Perfect. <laughs> Absolutely perfect there. And make sure they are on all the way. A little bit more. Oops. There we go. So you know when I stick this down now, this has got the height to, to trap that behind there. She says, poking it down. So you've got that height. I may have to trim that a little bit. Oh yes, I think I will have to. I may have to flag the end after all. <laughs> well, I'll just trim it down. So let me just check my measurements. Where's my little pink? Where's my little pink ruler gone? Oh, there it is. I can't get it up there. Uh, I got no nails. So the distance there is three and three and five eighths. So I may have to take this down to I'm gonna take this down to three and a three and a half. I'm gonna use my large scissors to do so. I flagged the ends on the other card. Here look. And it was it ended up being about the same size. So hmm. I do have a template as well, I forgot to show you. So your card is eleven and three quarters. You score at eight and a quarter, five and one eighth, four and one eighth, two and one. I'll take pictures of this. I was gonna use this card, look. Just help if that's poking the right way. So that's my template, just so I could work off. I always work with an old piece of cardstock first. So let's get this measured up. I'm going to take this down to three and a half and hope my cutting skills are a little bit straighter these days. Looks pretty cool to me. Oops, I've dropped my little stamp. There we go. I can put this on now if I want. Those hat strips come in real handy. Get my little tub. And I I want a, the oops, I want the first row of where my gems are gonna poke out. So, 
I've got a roll where I can fit the gems here. So I need to add that here. Or in fact, I could go two rows back. But no, I'm going to just eyeball that in the centre. Perfect. See, it traps there gorgeously. So that means i got to trim this down now as well. So that was three and a half. So I'm going to take this down to three and a quarter. Now, I know everything's got a little border elsewhere, but that Merry Merlot is absolutely stunning. Oh. I'm going to stamp on there now. Oh my gosh, and I'm going to love it. <laughs> so I'm going to get my black out. Oh, I think someone's having a barbecue somewhere because, oh my gosh, that's all I can smell. This is an absolutely gorgeous stamp. I'm inking this up rather well. I should have used my uh, stamparatus for this, I think. Just in case I don't get it inked up the first time. Oh gosh, can you imagine? So oh, I'm just going to ink again, I'm just going to keep inking and inking and inking. And a dress is going down to this bottom corner. And I'm going to leave the pressure on that for a minute. She's turned out perfect. Oh my gosh, turned out perfect this time. Yesterday when I, uh, lit yesterday, earlier on when I was doing this, I uh, had to fill a little bit in with my black marker pen. And I've got this out now for a good reason. Um, pop my little ruler. I'm getting out now my aqua painter which is freshly, and I'm going to fetch it in my piercing mat, just to keep the cloth on because I don't want my paper, because this is damp, constantly damp. See, I just squirted everywhere. I want a fairly dry bristle. And I'm going to grab that gorgeous Merry Merlot. I used my Winker Stella on the other one. Let's see if you can see it close up. The light is terrible, but if you can see, I used the Winker Stella. I will use Winker Stella on this one, but I want... I, and another thing, how do you squeeze these now into the lid? They're not that flexible. <laughs> you don't get much on there. And I was squeezing for all my might. A one drop. That is all I need. I may put two actually, because what I'm going to do then, I'm going to grab some ink off the actual ink pad, fetch that in, because I need this quite dark around the outside, and I know you're thinking why have you just washed it off, it's just I don't want too much at first and I'm just going to start around the outside absolutely fabulous I'm going to gradually work that colour out I don't know if you can hear the sound. My husband's watching Coronation Street. God bless him. I don't watch the soaps. Too busy. 
I stopped watching him after his daughter passed away, to tell you the truth. She was right and doing. Bless his soul. Let's pick up a bit more colour. Now what I'm going to do in a minute, I'm going to add more drops now in here. Weaken that down. And then just fetch the colour out paler. I don't want to over soak the, this though because it's just normal whisper white. Just fade that out. And then I'm going to do it with an even pale, oh gosh, even paler colour. And now I'm going to drop some more in. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, soak that up actually. And I'm just, this is fabulous, this cloth is. My hubby ended up scrounging my other massive large piece for the car, so I've got to buy a new one. Now I've cleaned that. I've still, can you see my bristles are still dirty? I'm just going to drop a few drops and then go around the outside just to get that little tinge. I don't want to, like I say, over soak my card. It's a fly in here, can you hear it? <laughs> right, and now I clean my bristles. Cloth is marvellous for cleaning your aqua painter. Perfect, I will give that some loving later. Give it some more cleaning. But you can see you've gone dark, paler, and even paler still around that outside. I'm going to give that a chance to have a little dry. And remove those out of the way. Just leave that on one side. And then we're going to come in. I want to... I'm not using that, actually. I'm not using that. I'm going to grab the pen instead. If you notice with the... With this, it's to the bride, and I want it running along, so I'm going to use my pen. And I'm just going to ink up to the bride, or for the bride, with this. Oh, did you see that flag go past then? <laughs> I thought it shooed him out before, but he's obviously was hiding somewhere. It's the only problem, though, isn't it? When you got the warm weather. You open your windows and all these flies come in. Oh, get away. I'm sorry about that. Oh my gosh. Please, Mr. Fly, don't come round near me. And then for the... And then I'm going to rinse it off on my cloth. I love this cloth. Now I'm going to do the bride bit. I can, can you hear that fly buzzing around? Oh my God, it's going to do my head in. Excuse me a moment, I'll see if I can get rid. I think I've managed to shoo him out the back door. <laughs> now I've shut the back door. God bless them. I know that oh, they're horrible creatures, but they're entitled to live just as we are. Open the back door and let him free. God bless. Oh, I've missed the bit off the brow. Uh, there. So now we're going to do the bride bit. Sorry, I'm going to pull this down a little bit. Might get the head in the way. But I want this done properly. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Love it. So instantly wash it off and your stamp is clean again. Absolutely fabulous. So these are the Merry Merlot. Just like a fine wine. <laughs> so this now is going to be adhered onto here. 
And I may add dimensionals actually onto this one just to give that little bit of height again. So there's no way that little centre step is coming off whatsoever. Didn't do that on yes, the other day, the other card. Why do I keep saying day? It's today. So, love my little pot. Thank you so much. Right, I'm going to open this up just for a moment. We're going to need it open shortly anyway, so I can add those rhinestones. There we go, perfect. Lots more height now. And that's going to sit perfectly. So I'll get my fast fuse. And where have I put my foil sheet? Oh, there it is, right in front of me. If it had been a dog, it'd have bit me, as my old ma used to say. I don't say used to, she's still alive. It's just that we live so far apart these days. On with it's a little bit curly. That is beautifully, beautifully put on. Don't think this has got now, it hasn't. <laughs> Perfect. Look at this. And now I'm going to pop this. Get the top and bottom just right. Coffee, honey. It's a little bit close to the. Yeah, I only cut everything one eighth of an inch smaller, so I shouldn't be expecting a huge border. That's perfect. Just beautiful. Isn't that pretty? Right, now for the Wink Costella. Now I'm using my old one. I think it's actually quite empty. I'm just going to go around the outside to give that colour sparkle. I actually use this as the brush instead of the aqua painter on the other card but it left too much of and we've got that paler version now around there that is just gorgeous I don't know if you can see it in this light but it's beautiful just stunning yay now for the gems oh gosh I love the blingy bit now this is fantastic so we've got anywhere you can see one of those little dimples is having one. It's a luxury card. So you can say, honestly say you don't have to go all the way down, but I'm gonna. Because I'm not stingy in any way, short, shape or form. And I think if you've got if your job's worth doing, it's worth doing well, so they say. That's that side. Oh my word. I loved it when I started seeing the bling go on this yesterday. Why am I saying yesterday? I did it today. Gosh. I've done so many videos over the past few days. I think I'm forgetting when I did this. But I know I did this this morning. Beautiful. Lots of bling. Now I'm going to bling up the inside. This is absolutely stunning. I'm going to roll a bling across the front. Oh my word, it's worth every little one of those little gems. Just perfect. And then I'm going one, two, I'm going two rows up, or maybe three even. So I'm going to have one on the edge of each card. I would fill every single one of them up if I uh, could, but there's no need on some of them. It's 
Just stunning. Absolutely stunning. I didn't want to come off, did I? What a delightful card. I can't get another one. Oh my gosh, I just want to bling it up everywhere. But there we go. Oh my lord, I love this card. Love, love, love it. I always cut the ends off. I hate to long bits. <laughs> so, there. Oh, we've nearly forgot my little flourish to break up that corner piece. Perfect. And this then is just going here to represent the bouquet. And to break that corner up, absolutely stunning. Oh my gosh, I love it. So there's the card I've just done in front of you. This Oh, i got three on there, look. Oh, girl, you need to do another one. <laughs> but this sits behind the... This is quite lower down now, because I added that extra depth on the card there. But it's still just as beautiful. Look. Just gorgeous. So, card one, card two. Oh my word, just beautiful. There you go, fingers, oh my gosh, beautiful. Uh, so, if you enjoyed, I'd love a thumbs up and share. Look how beautiful they are, just amazingly gorgeous. I've got to stand that up, it's just so pretty. Just so pretty. There you go. And like I'm saying, you can close these together. You can put a panel in there if you wish to write your message or on the back. Flip this over and it will go together in a card as well. You could put one, well, just one on the back even. But that is your centre step. Centre step, what have I called it? I've called this my centre step easel card. Well, I hope you like it and give it a go because it's just adorable. Thanks for watching. Oh, don't forget to press subscribe and the little bell and you'll be notified of all future videos. But yay. Love you all. Bye.